A guitar company spent over a year building me a guitar. They just delivered a guitar that I can finally say is the culmination of all our efforts. And I have to say, I think they knocked it out of the park. Stick around for a few minutes and I will tell you why. <laughs> So let's just not even talk about the guitar for a second. I just want to talk about a sound that I'm looking for. And whatever instrument gets it, that's what I want. That's the instrument I want to play. So this thing, if I have it gained up, I can go. But I can also go. The touch sensitivity dictates how clean or dirty it is. And not every guitar can do this. If you want to talk about a bell-like quality from a bridge humbucker pickup, which is very elusive in the first place, when I play softly with a gained up sound, you can actually hear the individual bells. Now, I couldn't resist thwacking it as hard as I could right then because a guitar like this with a tone like this invites me to play dynamically. All shadings, all levels, soft, loud, clean, and dirty. <laughs> So Heritage Guitars did not ask me to do this video that you're watching right now. They just wanted to make me a guitar that I would play and like and continue to play. Now, I did some videos for them over a year ago, part of their In Good Company series. And I said, don't pay me, don't give me a guitar, build me a guitar. And I was kind of difficult. I changed my mind several times. I made some mistakes in the design. They were very patient. And the end result uh, is a guitar that I have honest enthusiasm about. And if you see enthusiasm in this video, it's only because it's real and I'm gonna keep playing this thing and they did a great job. It has nothing to do with them. They did not ask me to do this video. In a minute, I'll go through all the specs of this Heritage H150. But first I wanna talk about the two things that put it into their bespoke category. One, I wanted a 1960 slim taper neck. Now, the other thing, I hope they keep it a trade secret because it turned out so well. I asked them to weight relieve this guitar. The way they did it, whatever they did, and I don't know what they did, <laughs> it makes this guitar ring like a piano. <laughs> Real quick, we are giving away a brand new collection of 30 free guitar lessons. So if you want to transform your guitar playing, click the link below and you'll have instant free access. So most of the features of this H150 are identical to the custom core model that's available everywhere. We have a mahogany body, a maple top, an aged nitrocellulose lacquer finish. It has a nice dull quality to it. This guitar has 500K CTS pots and orange drop capacitors. These together create a treble bleed circuit that keeps all the sparkle and fidelity no matter where you put the tone knob. This is a very useful thing if you have not yet experienced it. These are heritage pickups. They're called 225 custom humbuckers. They were wound in-house and designed by the legendary Edwin Wilson. 
The fretboard is, of course, rosewood. The frets are Jeskar 57110. They were installed by Karen Argello. She did a great job. She installed and finished them. They are perfect. There's no fret buzz, no matter how much I lower the action. They are a slightly different medium jumbo than you find on most heritage guitars. We have a bone nut that is crafted very well. The guitar stays perfectly in tune, even when I hit it hard. The nut width is 1.6875, and the next scale is 24.75. We have aged nickel hardware and a locking tunematic bridge that stays put after you adjust it. And finally, what they call light aging that gradually disappears from your view as you back away from the guitar. So I asked my friend Leno if he still had the original guitar that started this whole quest, the guitar I used in the video over a year ago, and if so, could I borrow it? Yes, he had it, and I did borrow it. It's in my hands. This is a standard H150, and I'm going to put it through its paces. <laughs> So the guitar sounds on this video are 100% through channel one of this Bad Cat Hot Cat amp head. A couple of times when I want more gain, I've stepped on the Karma ODR-10 or the Todd Sharp vacuum tube loop driver. The amp goes to a 412 Marshall cabinet that's mic'd up with some old speakers. And then it comes through microphones to a BAE pair of mic pre's. Those go into my Apogee converters and then straight into Pro Tools. I'd like to take just one more minute and show you some footage I put together of the Heritage factory floor and tell you just a little bit of their story. Once again, my enthusiasm for these guitars is real. This is not a sponsored video and it's been very easy for me to simply tell the truth about these guitars and the soul of this company. Heritage Guitars was founded in 1985 by three former employees of the Gibson Guitar Factory. Gibson had closed their historic Parsons Street Factory in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and relocated much of their production to Nashville, Tennessee. Some of the Gibson employees who did not want to move their homes and their families to Tennessee started production of guitars under a new name. The name was Heritage. Now, Heritage makes no claims about their guitars being handmade, but it's very clear to me that most of the building and production are very hands-on. And when I see images of the factory, they're identical to what you might have seen in a guitar factory from the late 50s or early 60s. The closer I look at their guitar building process, the more I'm tempted to call these handmade guitars. While I was making this video, I began to research the story of the company and look at various tours of the factory online. Now here you get a real sense of the pure motivations and the dedication of past and present builders, artists, and business people who have nurtured this company. Hey guys, a lot of the time YouTube will bring you my videos even though you're not subscribed. If you get the chance, click the subscribe button and ring the bell.